Hi, it's me, Rob Funches, and I want to give a quick thank you to our sponsor, Shopify. Did you need some marketing made simple? It seems like all of us are our own entrepreneurs, got our own businesses, got our own side hustles, things that we need to do. And sometimes we want to take those side hustles and make them better and make them more profitable. And maybe we want to make them our main hustle so that we could tell our boss to go F himself. I was going to curse, but then I thought maybe the sponsor would have an issue with it. And Shopify removes the guesswork with built-in tools to help you create, execute, and analyze your online marketing campaigns. Sign up for the $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash funches, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash funches, lowercase, to take your business to the next level today. That is shopify.com slash funches. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for watching the podcast and supporting it. And most of all, thank you for giving me messages when I've been on the road, uh, when I was in Denver, or I just got a message um, here on Instagram at home, and it made me feel so good. So I'm going to take a moment just to say from 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 Rachel. Rachel, I won't give your last name or anything like that, but you told me you felt getting better about a year ago. You've been going through your own journey and that it's been nice to uh, have someone else is going through similar things and that makes you feel less alone. Um, and I really appreciate that. So thank you for guys for supporting the podcast. If you want to go rate and subscribe, you know where you can go do that. Hit those buttons, hit the uh, follow on the YouTube so I can grow my YouTube channel. Um, and, you know, because I don't like to rely on these corporate worlds or anything like that i try to do whatever i can so that would be appreciated if you want to come see me on the road i'm coming to atlanta and north carolina i will be at city Winery uh wednesday the 28th i will be at uh Charlie Goodnights, the 29th. i'm also coming to uh salt lake city portland oregon bloomington indiana uh, got a lot of places I'm coming to. Just go to roundfunches.com. Please get some tickets, get them early so that I can continue to be a draw and make money during this strike. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, since there's no new shows coming out, why don't you watch Loot on Apple TV Plus? I think there's a plus in there. Um, and <laughs> You know, the Apple. Watch Lou on Apple. It's got Maya Rudolph. It's got myself. I'm sick of these clubs using fucking undateable and uh, blackish as my credits. I want more people to know Lou, watch Lou, so that Lou can be my main credit. Harley Quinn can be my credit. We got other things coming that I can't even talk about. But your boy, stay working. Uh, just so continue to support me. Watch those shows. Uh, come see me in person. And uh, buy the shoes. I think they're still available. If you can, just go buy them so that they sell out completely so I can keep making them and we can continue to donate money to autism charities. I would appreciate that. Other than that, let's get on with the show. Hi, guys. It's me again. I'm back. I don't even know if I want to do this podcast half the time. I said that many times and I hate when somebody bitches about it and then just like make a decision or not. I almost quit the podcast a couple weeks ago, a week ago. Actually, I did quit it and then I just didn't tell uh, uh, <laughs> Hogan. And then he was like, we got an ad. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I might as well do it. What am I doing? Sometimes you get frustrated, you know, I feel and I and I like to be completely honest about things and where I am as a person. Um, I love stand up so much right now i love my acting i think it's great podcasting is something that um i love the freedom of it i love the ability for me to just free flow and talk about myself and talk about um the weird things that i think that um i don't necessarily get to express through stand up or express through acting um but at the same time it, it is um monotonous sometimes i lose focus about it i don't really find myself being that into interviewing people usually uh because i don't care about them um <laughs> Uh, so and usually it's with my friends or stuff and I like that and I get to reconnect with them it's harder when it's a new person for me because I have to really uh, sometimes I find out the cool things about them and uh, things they've done and I get interested in it but um, for the most part I just really love stand up and acting and I never got in it to be a podcaster and it feels like and this is my frustration and this is when I watch other people who have more successful podcasts and stuff like that where it's like, oh, I think to be successful at it, I have to like 
um, be a, basically a talking head talking about topical things that are going on week to week that I may or may not care about. And I just don't think I'll ever do that because that's not why I got into comedy. That's not why I got into entertainment. I feel like, the, like we've talked about this a few times on the podcast, but I think like it's really coming to a head where there's this like, feels like the most famous comedians are podcasters, you know? And that's fine, but I don't necessarily find most of them that hilarious. There are certainly um, exceptions to the rule. Um, I won't name exception or the people I don't think are hilarious. It keeps it all mysterious. That's fine. Uh, but it's just not what I wanted in comedy and not what I came to do. And I always like to, when I started comedy, one of the reasons that I got into it is because I wasn't seeing the things that I wanted to create and things that I wanted to enjoy. I was seeing a lot of negativity. Um, it was during the height of the Louis C. Carey area. So you, when you went to open mics and stuff, you've seen a lot of white guys saying nigger and shit. And it was just a thing I didn't enjoy. And that's why a lot of my comedy um, went the opposite way where I was trying to be positive, talk about how much I love my family, talk about how much I enjoy my life. And same thing when it came to podcasting you know so many things was about who are you gonna tear down this week what who's getting into a fight this week on their podcast and i just wanted to be about um lifting people up and in and showcasing minds and hearts that i truly enjoy and enjoy being around um and I guess sometimes just my ego gets in the way where I'm like, oh, people should be, there should be like 20,000, 50,000 listeners and I should have ads all the time. And, and I should be, uh, you know, selling out shows and moving up to theaters because I'm really good at comedy. I got three fucking standing ovations out of five shows in Denver. And now and then when they say that out loud, I want to make sure that you know and understand if you're not in comedy, Denver is one of the um easier places to perform best crowds in the country so getting a standing ovation it, it's not like i got it in the middle of fucking mississippi or something but um still they're not giving it up for no reason um i'm getting better at my stand-up and i love it so much and i mean just being honest with you going through the divorce and going through the custody stuff and seeing my podcast like listed as a uh item in my custody battle and talking you know people having my lawyers having to listen to my podcast to fucking refute anything that my ex was saying it just makes me feel like what is it even worth doing you know when i'm like oh now my podcast is called literally costing me money um but then i get messages from people like rachel and the people in denver who tell me and there's a different look always in people's eyes when they tell me I'm funny or a poster. They tell me that they love the podcast. You know, when they tell me I'm funny, it's just like, oh, man, I like you and this. I love your voice and Harley Quinn. I like you and Trolls. Da, da, da. But when they tell me that they love the podcast, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, you saved my life. You saved my mental health. You saved this and that. And I appreciate that. And I tell them, but also I feel like sometimes that's too much of a responsibility for me. <laughs> no fucking skills or credits or um degrees i was going to say in that field but i should just say at all um, <laughs> your boy's a three-week community college dropout ah uh, but i think i had just been getting a lesson about not everything is like gangbusters right away and not everything feels amazing but it's like sometimes you know what you push through and you know what you don't and I, I get a lot out of the podcast and i'm just gonna take it as it comes so maybe it'll come out once every week maybe it'll come out once a month it'll really just determine on my schedule and my life how much time i don't want it to take away time from teddy and stuff which has been great oh we can do a teddy check-in too Oh my God, we're talking about the podcast and my own frustrations, and I hope they're relatable. But this little boy, oh my God, I love this kid. I love both my boys, but it's been really nice to see, um, all already see differences in their personality, and um, and again, this is I don't like to I don't want to preface it or anything, but like so far, it seems that Teddy's neurotypical. Um, of course he's way early but we knew we knew um this early with malcolm that he was not neurotypical and so it's interesting to 
see the differences in the like amount of talking that Teddy does and um that we could have little conversations and taking him to the zoo and seeing him um just being able to take him to the zoo. I couldn't imagine taking Malcolm to the zoo when he was two years old or 14 months around Teddy's age because he would just dart off, dart off in the, you know, it seemed like he, we were kidnapping him. We'd go pick him up and, and try to get him back thing and he's screaming bloody murder and you have everybody looking at you like you were kidnapping a child and it was very stressful, you know, especially as a uh, young black father in a lily white salem oregon you know people looking at you like you trying to steal a half white baby um they don't usually take that kindly not half white babies um <laughs> and so to take teddy to zoo and not only see that like he could handle it and he would walk around a bit and come back to me and go back in his stroller and but also seeing how far malcolm has come that i could have him as my only help for that day that Malcolm was helping me watch Teddy and just made me feel good to take both my boys out to the zoo I don't know what you guys feel about zoos a lot of people hate zoos um I hate zoos but just because of the um prices that they have that are it's like you can't be charging me ten dollars for an icy that's ridiculous who are you not even the movie theaters not even the movies where they have moving seats and Nicole Kidman saying shit. Not even there do they have the courage to charge you $10 for an icy. They still keep it around eight, seven bucks. But at the zoo, they don't give a fuck. They're like, go fuck yourself. You may or may not see an animal today. <laughs> I know we said we had them, but we didn't bring any for you. Now spend $100 on lunch. Um, <laughs> well, it was a great experience. I took Teddy swimming today for our first time ever. It's the first time I even used the pool in my house. Was uh, he was getting a little cranky about being inside, so I took him out. It's a hot day. Put him in the pool, and it's just man. I'm sure there's some dads and, and moms who can relate and can go into their memory banks right away. But that feeling of just swimming with your little baby and watching them kick their legs and then get a little scared and like grab onto you for dear life so that they don't drown. And you knowing that you are all that is between them and drowning. It's a beautiful power and responsibility and love to take care of a, a kid. And um, it's been really fun to this past couple of weeks that the schedule has been getting uh, more concrete and how long I know I'm going to see Teddy and that I get to see him a little bit more and um, I just love it I love being a dad I know we talked about that on Father's Day but um, just wanted to check in and just tell you where I was with that hi I'm a businessman Ron Funches I run all types of businesses, things that I go. I'm a comedian. I'm a host. I sell merchandise. I sometimes, uh, I think that's about it. I'm thinking of other things I do, trying to make myself sound better, but that's about it. But either way, I got a lot of things I got to keep track of, take care of, and that's why I appreciate Shopify. Did you hear that little ching, ching, ring, ring? That's the sound of another sale on Shopify, and that's the moment as a business person that you live for. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. It don't matter if you selling pickles in Portland or... <laughs> <laughs> hot sauce in houston i love alliteration so shopify simplifies selling online and in person so you can focus on successfully growing your business Ooh, wait uh you there's categories that you can work under like fashion home garden health beauty it's a beautiful time doesn't matter if you sell succulents or stilettos flaky salt or fine art prints those are that's what they put in there i feel like my hot sauce in houston and stuff was even more fun Shopify covers every sales channel from in-person point of sale system to all in one e-commerce platform. It even lets you sell across social media marketplaces like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. And thanks to the 24-7 help and extensive business course library, Shopify is always there to support your success every step of the way. 
Now, what I love about Shopify is that no matter how big you want to grow it, what you want to grow, Shopify is there to empower you. It is a tool that you can use. It's not there to hold you down or make things worse, but it only makes things better no matter if you have a small little business that's trying and you don't want to grow it and you're not trying to become the next Apple or whatever. Sometimes people want to make their businesses too big, but Shopify, don't you don't need to. It's just about your turn to get serious about selling and try Shopify today. And this is all possible. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at Shopify.com slash Funches, all lowercase. Go to Shopify.com slash Funches to take your business to the next level today. Go to Shopify.com slash Funches. Um, health-wise, I've, like, keep feeling good and then, like, back off a little bit. I've been real focused on my workouts working out like six days a week doing my jujitsu two days a week um, my diet has been good and then not good and then good again and then like right now it's like at a seven where it's like i'll be wanting to eat snacks and treats but then i just eat my true fruit chocolate covered berries and stuff um and then try not to but lord knows i got a cart uh from cake monkey on my postmates right now um which I try not to order Cake Monkey because I feel like just from the name alone, it's like um, it's almost feels racial. And then it makes you feel like you're a fat little bitch. You know, you're like, oh, come on, you little Cake Monkey. You know, you want it. You got you hooked on it. You got the Cake Monkey on your back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to stay away from the Cake Monkey. Um and I got like an hour, an hour and a half where they shut down that. <laughs> Make sure my cart doesn't go through. And I'm going to try not to by distracting myself. That's one of the things my nutritionist teaches you. It's really fun how um, much of it is not really like scientific at all, but just like truly treating yourself like a child where it's like, oh, if you want to eat something bad, why don't you distract yourself for 10 minutes and see if you still want to do it pull out a shiny object move it around a bit maybe later you forgot that you wanted to eat cookies and cakes um and i tell you it kind of works so i'm gonna keep on it a little bit um and the more i talk on this podcast the more i'm like oh i do like my podcast i guess i like um just talking to myself maybe we'll do a lot of just these just intros and we don't even worry about guests unless somebody i know and love really wants to do the podcast we gotta just evolve and flow as life goes but you don't have to quit everything so there's always that you know i don't know sometimes it is good to quit gotta manage and maintain your garden um but I feel like so many people still get off of it. I don't know if, I mean, if it gets to the point where it feels more of like an obligation than something that I like, I will quit. Or if I get a really, really good network job that takes me every day and I got to worry about what I say in a free form format, I will quit this podcast at a drop of a hat. So please, universe, uh, help me. <laughs> help me escape this podcast. I can't leave the people behind for no reason. But if you can help me get a big, beautiful job that will pay a lot of money, then we can get out of this and and and, and spread joy in another way. Um, and that would be cool. I'm open to that. Um, I'm also just going to try to focus on getting more stand up clips out because it feels like I've been very resistant to that because I came in a, a different era where you're, you're you treated your your jokes like. Um, like you were stockpiling gold, you know, and you wanted to make sure nobody saw it before it's too early and you wanted to make sure you didn't burn it on this and burn it on that. And now it feels like more of an arms race where everybody is pushing material and burning material. And I got to be somewhere in the middle because I'm not going to follow what everybody does, but I'm going to try to get more stand up out, more topical things, more things that I enjoy and just be more active uh, with uh, the people who like me and want to come see me because it's, it's hard out there. There's so many different avenues there's so many different tours going on and everybody wants you to come see them and some people uh everybody wants to put out a special and but like i said before and i will keep this for my whole life i i put out art that i love and enjoy and it makes me feel good i'm not ever going to try and i'm lucky to be in this position because i do other things but i'm never going to try to just put something out to like build a fan base and grow things and if it's not ready or if i don't feel um like my material has grown and changed like i said i like to work like outcast 
I, I may not put something out once a year, once every two years, even once every three, four years. But when I do, I want you to see the marked growth, the differences, the improvement, and uh, just everything up a whole nother level from the project before it. Um, I've been working on my hour. I feel like, I mean, I don't want to give it a number, but if I would, I'd say like 50, 60 percent of the way there as far as like having some real put together shit and I got to go in there. We still got to build the guest room. We still got to build, put some stairs in and then carpet and um, start decorating and stuff. But the actual foundation of the house seems about there. It's still missing uh, that back, that like back patio. We don't have that, that, that clear exit. Yeah, but we got the intro, we got the themes of some things, and then we got to figure out what the big exit, the big um, summary when you, you know, I look at it a lot like when you would write uh, papers in college or high school or AP, for me, would have been high school AP English, of just, you know, putting together a hypothesis or supporting it with facts and jokes and then making a summary to wrap everything up. And right now my, my hour is like, I make a hypothesis. I give you examples and back it up. And then I close on something, a completely different subject. So I got to fix that shit. Uh, but um, I just want to give you guys a check in. I'm going to start going through my specials or my hours and, and, and clipping up what I know isn't going to make it out and sending that out. And then everything else we'll put together. And hopefully my plan is to put something and tape something by Malcolm's 21st birthday, which is April 21st. So we're going to put that out in the universe, put that out to you guys. Um, hope me continue to hold me accountable. Um, thank you for those who keep listening to the podcast, even when it becomes a little inconsistent and when it comes out. Um, and, if you see me or if you like to get something for the podcast, best thing you can do is tell me about it and let me know because it truly keeps me going at a time where uh, sometimes I want to quit and not do it because uh, it's not really what I wanted in comedy was to be serious or like help people. <laughs> I want to tell jokes and be a silly boy and have fun um but i'm open to whatever i also just want to be a leader and do what i do uh so i say all that to say because i imagine some of you want to hear these words i hope you're feeling strong i hope you're feeling brave i hope you're feeling loved and grateful for that love I hope you have something that pushes you through when you want to quit and you want to give up. Um, and if something's not serving you and truly isn't providing you with um, the feeling of getting better, the feeling uh, of accomplishment, then let it go. Whether that is a relationship, a job, a, a family member, some people got cut out. You got to be brave enough to, to make sure that you have a beautiful life and a happy life. And that's one of the best things that, I mean, I don't ever like to get too personal, personal, but I just want to read you guys this Father's Day message that I got from my sister. And it really just, she nailed it and made me feel good and made me be like, oh, is this how I'm seeing it makes me feel good. She just wants to say happy. Hey, brother, happy Father's Day. You're a wonderful father. I'm so proud of the steady and peaceful life you provide for yourself and your sons. And I am proud of you for having the courage to maintain that peace and continue to strive for excellence. You're one of the best men I know, and I'm proud to be your sister. And that made me feel so good because that's how I feel about, like, my relationship ending, things changing, it's that... When you, one day, some days it feels like a failure and feels like I messed up and I feel like um, the, the things that I wanted in my head just didn't come to fruition. And other days, it feels exactly as my sister said, that I continue to strive for peace and joy in my life. And even when something that I thought I wanted with all my heart and was willing to put in effort for and sacrifice for, um, when it's not bringing me peace, not bringing me joy, not bringing me love, I have the strength and the conviction and the courage and the belief in myself, self-confidence to walk away from it, even when it makes when other people might not see it or it might not make sense to them. And I just hope you have that as well. If it's not serving you and you know it for real and you know it in your heart and you're just hoping things will change and you're waiting for things to change. Just have the courage, have the self-esteem, believe in yourself, love yourself enough 
to uh, walk away and start over. It'll hurt. It'll be painful for sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, being authentic and knowing what you're in is, is so much of a better thing mentally than ever having to wonder, ever having to second guess yourself or, or have to change yourself for somebody else. I love me. I love what I'm about. I love my messy little house. I love my stony little self. I love how silly I am. I love the fact that I'm going to go do some stand up and then come right back home and play some fucking Final Fantasy 16 for the rest of the night. Um, and I love you guys. So continue to support me because I surely need it. I know sometimes it may not look like I do because I got big ass house and shit. But <laughs> well, I'm still going to fall apart any day. I don't think so. That doesn't seem true. I'm doing great. I'm a good actor, good comedian. Things are going to keep going on the right way. This fucking, we need to end this fucking strike so that I can go back to work so that my mentally I can feel better. But in the meantime, Trying to uh, cross some I's, dot some T's, get everything better, get my merch together, get my, like I've said, it's giving me time to, to go through and, and come up with a way to put out clips. Um, we're going to try to get these funches, tie dyes out of just being something that you got to buy on the road and hopefully get some online and on my site. Um, so we're just going to keep trying to elevate and update and just be our best selves. And I hope you do too. And I continue to grow with you. All right. So that's it. Just checking in on this one. Little banger. We got no guests. Nothing. To, uh, we'd already promoted my stuff. Watch Lou Apple TV. Uh, we got 80 for Brady. You can watch that in uh, uh, streaming somewhere. Watch Harley Quinn. We have the new season coming out soon. Um Man, when I say this shit, I'm like, damn, I'll be working a lot. Because uh, then I'm also trying not to say the projects that I know about that I can't say yet. Um, <laughs> but hopefully we just live and learn and getting better. And we'll continue to check in and enjoy this podcast. Leave some feedback. Leave some messages on the YouTube. Uh, or leave them wherever you can so I know whether or not to keep doing it. And having fun with it. Because I enjoy you guys. And I appreciate you. And I love you. Have a good one. Thank you for listening. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out our last episode right over here. Bam! Or perhaps a video picked by our overlords at YouTube. Boop. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit it up. Hit it up. Press the button. Press it! <laughs>